Good morning, TTC family. It is Sandra, TTC45, and welcome to Donor Cycle Day 5. Yes, today is the first day of monitoring for my donor, and I am getting ready to head to the RE office to meet her, and I can't wait to see how she is responding so far. Now, before she started the medication, um, she had 10 plus follicles in both ovaries, which is, you know, to be expected for her age, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to respond well to the medicine. And that's one of the reasons why the doctors be concerned about the BMI, because they state that when your BMI is too high, the medicine is not going to reach the ovaries like they should to get the follicles to grow. So I'm hoping that that's not the case with her because she did not quite meet the um, BMI goal, but she came close enough for them to get started. And uh, we're really hoping that it definitely worked. I mean, I just hope that she produces enough for me to um, get pregnant once because that's all I plan to be pregnant one time. And um, I'm not sure what will happen in the um, far future, but I definitely know at this point that the only plan is to have one more child. So with that being said, if she produces enough good quality eggs and they end up making it to freezing stage, what do I do with the eggs that are left? Well, that's going to be another video that I will talk about at a later time. But at this time, I just want to focus on uh, making sure that she don't overproduce and jeopardize her own health and that she produce enough good quality eggs so we can get started. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as possible and not have to um, worry about so many different attempts. We really want to make just one attempt at this and hope that that one attempt works. Now, transfer attempts, I can do that all day long, but I just don't want my donor to have to go through the whole IVF process again because it's not an easy process. I didn't like it, and I'm sure she doesn't, but I'm just grateful to God that she's agreeing to um, continue forward with this, and um, she's going to see this through to the end. So I'm going to have you guys come follow me throughout this day as we go into this RE and see what um, kind of follicles we have going in there now. And I will be getting back with you guys later. See you soon. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Mm. Is it hurting? Yeah, like, I'm not happened. even touching you. I'm not even moving, so I don't know. Uh, so I feel like pressure. Well, you have a probe in your hoo-ha, so it's yeah. not gonna be great. Mm. But I'm not, I'm not even moving. I'm totally not even moving this probe. I'm gonna have to, but I'm not. It's okay. If you're in pain now, yeah, most people are not really uncomfortable. The first ultrasound, they don't say five. They say ten, you know, that might be uncomfortable. Because we're all filled with fluid, so they get heavy. You get bloated, back pain, all that stuff is. I know, I went really bloated. All comes with it, yeah. Yeah. Hey 
Hey guys, I'm back, and I'm sorry if I look tired, because guess what? I'm tired. <laughs> I've had a long day, and it started at 4 o'clock this morning, but I'm glad I'm back. So, what happened at the RE today? So, it seems like my donor is responding well to the medicine, and I am so happy to report that. Um, in her left ovary, she had at least 10 follicles that were measurable, and they're measuring anywhere between 8 to 13, most of them being between 11 and 13. And in her right ovary, she's measuring about 6 follicles, and they are between 8 to 11 so they just a little bit behind but pretty much on course for where she needs to be for stem day five and i do apologize at the beginning of the video i did say welcome to donor cycle day five but this is really donor stem day five so yes i am happy that she's responded to the medicine well as a matter of fact she's much like myself she's responded to the medicine a little too well so they've decided to decrease her medication and um, start her on the Ganarelix, which is the medicine that stops you from ovulating. And that's the, pretty much the same thing they had to do to me early on in the um, cycle. So I'm glad to know that um, her BMI did not stop her from responding. And again, I don't want her to produce a lot, but enough for me to at least make one baby. I have no plans for another child after this, but never say never. I just know that at this point, it's not a part of my plan. So excuse the noise that you're hearing in the background. Apparently, my cat decides she wanted to use the bathroom when I started to video. And so please excuse her. So anyway, um, as far as a transfer day is concerned, <sighs> you guys know there's always disappointments and setbacks when it comes to fertility journeys. And um, when I had uh, went to the RE probably about three weeks ago, it was really my donor's um, consult appointment, but they wanted me to come in as well because they wanted both of us to sign all the paperwork that needed to be signed. But she was the only one to hear the medicated consult. I didn't. And so I talked to the nurse briefly, and she told me, well, we're going to schedule you later because you're not ready to start yet um, because of the fact that you're going to be doing a frozen embryo transfer. And I'm like, okay, so when is later? She said, well, give us a call when you start your cycle, and uh, we'll go from there. And I said, okay. So, if you guys been following me, I am back to my original RE, the one RE that I can't stand his office. And one of the reasons why I can't stand his office is because they're very unorganized. Not only are they unorganized, the lack of communication is horrible. I mean, I went through two unmedicated cycles due to their lack of communication, and that frustrated me so bad that I was ready to just find me another RE altogether. So once again, there were lack of communication, and I was told to call on my first day of my cycle, which took me five weeks to get due to the surgery. So naturally, I'm all excited by the time I finally started, only to be told that, oh, because you're doing a frozen embryo transfer, we can't start you on the medication until after your donor retrieves because the insurance is not going to pay for the um, uh, medicated cycle to begin until they know that there are embryos on ice. And not that that's a big deal, but you guys can tell me this before. You know, you get my hopes up high. I'm thinking I'm getting ready to start only to be told, call back next month with your cycle. <sighs> that just really frustrated me. So, as it turns out, I don't think I will be doing a transfer in the month of May 
at all because if I have to depend on my next cycle, which God knows how long that's going to be because, I, like I said, it took five weeks to get this cycle. But the RE did state that if I didn't come on my cycle within 40 days, that they would go ahead and induce the cycle. So um, between my regular normal time I come on and the 40 days, it's still going to put me into June transfer because I have to be on a medication for at least three weeks before I can um, do the transfer, which means that I will have to be starting my cycle the first week of May in order to do a May transfer. So it's not going to happen in May. And at first I was a little disappointed about it, but I kind of looked at it as a good thing because right now I'm going through a lot and um, I really don't think it's a good time to do the transfer. Um, one of the things that I'm going through is a little stress. You know, I'm going through family issues with my uh, father's side of the family. And these are issues that's been around for years. Um, a lot of it is unresolved, and I'm not even sure if it'll ever get resolved. But at this point, you know, I'm just about cutting all ties with them. And that that is kind of mentally bothering me but that's another video all by itself so i'm not really going to get into deep discussions about that um so but yeah I, i'm a little overly stressed about that situation um not to mention that throughout this journey i've been maintaining control of my blood sugars because i did read before i started this journey that if you have diabetes trying to get pregnant that the best thing to do is get the diabetes under control before you get pregnant that way they can be able to control it better after you get pregnant so i've been doing good with dieting and exercise as a matter of fact i've been doing a little bit too good too good to a point where the doctor decided to pretty much uh, decrease some meds and eliminate a, a whole lot of other meds and not that that was a bad thing but i do think she kind of rushed to that decision because my diabetes went back out of control. So now I have a month more to try to get my diabetes back under control. I did give her a call to let her know what was going on because I was testing my sugars. So um, she did send me for an updated A1C, which does show that the diabetes is back out of control and she um, put me back on some of my medicine. So that should help. But I am still, you know, doing what I supposed to do. The only thing is I'm not doing too much of exercise like I used to. Uh, for a long time, I wasn't exercising at all due to the surgery, but now that I'm kind of getting, <coughs> excuse me, fully healed, I'm getting more back into it, just not as much. So that's going to take a while before I can get back on to that. <coughs> get get back on to that um cycle but yeah so i do think that you know putting it off for another month would be in its best even though i'm a little upset about the clinic for getting my hopes up high but it is what it is right now i'm just concerned about whether or not my donor produce enough good quality eggs you know she could have 30 follicles and that don't mean that each follicle have an egg in it. And if, if each follicle do have an egg in it, that doesn't mean that all the follicles are mature or uh, of good quality. So um, right now, all I want is one. And I will be happy with that. So, um, and I also don't want to get my hopes up too high because I do know that even um, after joining uh, forums, um, of women who've used donors um, to get pregnant a lot of them was talking about the failures you know some of them had transfers that did not take and they ended up not pregnant so you know I just don't want to get too excited about it it, it sounds excited it seems excited but <clears throat> I don't want to get too excited because you know 
um, even though I'm using a younger person, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get pregnant. Using a donor does increase the odds of you getting pregnant, but it does not increase it by 100%. So there's still that small percentage that you may not get pregnant. So I want to be excited, but I just don't want to get too excited. And that's pretty much um, where I am in the game, you know, just hoping that I can at least get that one good one and be over with. You know, I had back-to-back -back surgeries, one in February and one in March. The one in February was to remove a polyp, and the doctors had a chance to look on the inside of my uterus at that point with the camera, and they thought my uterus looked great. They didn't see nothing wrong with uh, me having any type of implantation or anything. But then I turned around and caught the tumor, and um, I don't know if it would have did anything to my uterus. I don't think so because, you know, my gynae told me he didn't do anything to the uterus, but he did take a look at the uterus from the outside with the camera and he didn't find any scarring or endometriosis, anything that should stop the baby from implanting. So I'm hoping that um, I can get one embryo transferred and that one embryo transfer will stick because I am... Right now, focusing on um, making sure that my home, my future home for my future baby, is where it needs to be. Um, I never had a problem with the um, lining of my uterus. It always was um, growing at the thickness that they wanted it to be. So, um, right now... What I'm doing is um, I started back up acupuncture. I uh, still do my my castor oil packs. I still do my massages. And I eliminated all of my supplements because since I'm no longer trying to conceive using my own eggs, I thought it was no reason for me to continue with the supplements. So I got rid of them. Now, the L-arginine, I got rid of that a long time ago, even before I got rid of all the other supplements. But after a little bit more research, I learned that L-arginine is actually good for implantation. And I actually read it a lot. So I put myself back on the L-arginine only for implantation purposes only. So I'm really right now just focusing on um, getting my body prepared for implantation as well as preparing prepare for pregnancy. So that's pretty much been my main goal at this point. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get overly excited because I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm praying that um, I get what I want out of it. And I applaud my donor for uh, sticking through with this because it's, it's not, a, IVF is not an easy uh, process to go through. And I'm sure those of you who have been through it know exactly what I'm talking about. She is not liking those needles at all. And I feel bad because she responds the way I respond. I couldn't stand them needles neither. So I know what she feel like. I know what she's going through. Yet she's still being a trooper and she's still sticking it out. You know, she may complain at the moment, but then she'll turn around and be like, okay, let's do this and get this over with. So <laughs> she's being a champ about it. So, um... I've already gave her the 411 that by the time she get to cycle day 7 and cycle day 8 is really going to start to get heavy because right now she thinks she's heavy and it's bloated. I said, oh, you think that's heavy. You wait till you get to cycle day 7 or cycle day 8. That's when you're really going to feel it. And by the time you get to cycle day 10, you ain't even going to be able to walk. So, um, but, and that was only to try to <clears throat> get her in the spirit of this and pretty much prepare her for it. So, yeah, um, she should be, um, having her retrieval. She should be having her retrieval by next Wednesday, you know, if not sooner, because like I said, she's responding very well just as well as I was responding when, uh-oh, I think my cat's sick here. What's wrong, baby? What's wrong? What you been eating that you not supposed to be eating? 
Ain't nothing but clear fluids coming up, so I don't know what it is. She don't have anything. But back to the regular scheduled program. Anyway, so... But yeah, ladies, that's what's going on. So the next video that I am going to be updating you guys on, I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by my cat because she keep, you know, um, seem like she want to regurgitate, but nothing is coming out. But um, my next video I'm going to do would be um, doing her retrieval. So um, you guys can see the retrieval and how many follies she got and how many well all of them should fertilize because they're going to be doing ICSI so now it's just about how many follow how many eggs she get and how many that's going to make it to freezing because they are going to do a freeze all so yeah um i can't believe that that part of it is coming up so quick it's only a week from now and um yeah i'm excited and i'm sure she is because she's ready for this to be over with she's got a trip planned to miami next month and <laughs> she's planned to be back to normal by the end so she's ready to have this over with so yeah that's what's going on and that's what happened today um a lot more to tell you but i will be putting them in more videos um in the future and um I just really thank you guys for sticking through with me. Thank you for not being judgmental because I chose to go to a donor. Thank you for all of your support. And um, to those who have offered me really great advice, even if you didn't think I took it, I actually did, you know. And so um, right now, I just hope that we all get our big, big fat peas this year, those of us who have not gotten it. And um, I really look forward to seeing the Big Fat P videos. So um, thank you to those new subscribers. I do have new subscribers. I thank you for following my journey. And I hope that my journey can be inspiring to you. And if you guys are on a TTC journey as well, I plan to be following your journey as well. And uh, we can just uplift each other. So, um, I'll be getting back with you guys next week, giving you guys an update. And sometime in the near future, I would also do a video about my donors. And I said donors with an S because we're talking egg and sperm. So, yes, I have two donors to discuss. Okay, ladies, have a good night and sticky baby dust to you all. Bye.